considering uh, how the Digimon world works here, this matchup is actually, um, yeah, this is actually pretty interesting in my opinion here. So I did a little research on Omnimon and, sorry, Omnimon or Omega Mon, and then I had a subscriber named, well, <laughs> Rayquaza to actually give me this video. And I'm going to be honest with you guys here, but, uh, you know what, I'm not going to give that until the end, no. So let's talk about Omnimon, how strong is it? Easily, complex... Easily ranges from universal to a complex multiversal area. This guy is easily able to fight the guardians of Idrisil, who are capable of destroying um, these branches, and these branches are capable of holding universes. So again, it's kind of like Marvel, where you have Idrisil, the world tree, which contains the nine realms. These nine realms are obviously universes. It's in that way, but in the Digimon's perspective. He was also strong enough to take down the likes of Leviathan or, you know, these, um, these, uh, kind of beings here that are capable of existing no matter what. So even if you kill these guys, they'll just keep coming back here. But he, yeah, um, Omnimon or Omega Mon should be above, <clears throat> should be above these guys considering he's capable of taking them down or even taking them beings that are going down. Uh, sorry, I said beings of taking them down. Taking, uh, sorry, he's capable of taking down beings that are capable of taking them down. Now, in terms of speed here, if you guys didn't see the first scan here, he's capable of moving so fast that he's able to go through um, space and time very casually. That's a faster than light to many times faster than light feet here, okay? That means this guy can just casually soar through, um, you know, basically hit a silver surfer within a couple moments here. By the way, I got a Silver Surfer match um, coming up pretty soon here, so hope you guys enjoyed that. So, honestly, um, yeah, this is pretty impressive. Animon possesses, I do believe, the same amount of versatility as Kumon and and uh, Akumon, also known as the legendary Greymon, who also has his universal plus level stats here, which is actually impressive in my opinion here. Haven't really watched Digimon in a while, but after doing this research, I gotta say, I love this already. So yeah, honestly, uh, yeah, these beings are, yeah, the, the, these guys are just very powerful in general. Omega Mon does possess his own blade, cable causing shockwaves. And creating um, craters um, near Idrisil. He's also capable of fighting beings that are capable of, you know, harming the Mother Eater. Which is basically like their, I believe it's like their one above all, in a way. I think she's like that final boss type of deal here. She's like the Shao Kahn, um, the, uh, the Akuma. You, you guys get it right. The final boss of it all. And she's like immensely more powerful than the likes of Alpha Mon and even Omega Mon at certain points in definitely uh, uh certain times in my opinion so yes i do believe that this is pretty impressive here these digimon are actually capable of ripping holes in space and time and omnimon would actually just scale above basic legend sorry i'm saying legendary pokemon <laughs> basic um digimon or at least final form digimon which are capable of doing this okay so he's actually capable of doing this and sorry he's capable of scaling above this in my opinion and the fact that he, again, would scale up a Greymon, who has his own universal feats here. As a matter of fact, you can actually say that some of the Digimon in that verse have actually have island to planetary level um, feats here. And then they gradually just grow in, in everything, honestly. The Digimon is ridiculously broken and ridiculously overpowered in some regards here. But let's get into Rayquaza here. I think everyone should know who Rayquaza is by now. If not on my channel, the entire Pokemon, you know, um, <laughs> Pokemon franchise, you all should know who Rayquaza is. That's the GOAT. That, he's literally the GOAT of Pokemon. Like, you see this dude on the scene, he's winning nine times out of ten. I, I don't think Rayquaza has really taken an L unless it was by, like, someone massively more powerful than him. So to start this off with simple scaling, Rayquaza scales above um, pseudo or basically base level legendary Pokemon. Now you might say, legendary, what do you consider as base level legendary Pokemon? Pokemon that are actually considered, you know, smaller than the actual legendaries and are still capable of doing universal stuff. For example, Necromaza, Sogaleo, um, Lunala, Eveltel, Xerneas, Zygarde, who you can actually make a debate for, honestly. And uh, you got Mewtwo, okay, um, Darkrai, 
and Deoxys. Now, which one of those do you think Rayquaza fights on the regular and beats on the regular? Deoxys, right? And that's pretty simple. And Deoxys even falls into that category, so he can scale off those other beings. He would say, and Deoxys is honestly, I think you can actually argue he's the most powerful one out of them, other than Zygarde, Necromaza, right? And Mewtwo. Those three, oh, uh, Darkrai as well. We gotta count Darkrai. Yep. Other than those four, yeah, he should count as the most pop as the most powerful. Um, but you can also make a contention for those four being the most powerful. Now you might say, Legendary, what have these Pokemon done? Well, Darkrai is basically the Pokemon version of Nightmare, who manipulates the Dream World like it's candy. All right, it, it's absolutely nothing to him. He manipulates your dreams, your biggest, your deepest um, desires, okay? So he's capable of manipulating these and pretty much feeding off them. He's also capable of blasting Dialga and Palkia. And there's Solgaleo, who can all, and Lunala, who can rip holes in dimensions. Zygarde, the, who scales above life and death themselves, which are, again, universal concepts. So these Pokemon are just absolutely broken and Rayquaza scales above this and here's the thing he scales to the creation trio once he mega evolves you can even say he's above Dialga and Palkia who are basically exist outside of their respective things like time and space all right they exist on a hierarchy above the Pokemon multiverse with big brother Giratina and then Arceus at the top now, where do you think I'm going to place Rayquaza? I think that's very simple by the scans you're seeing here. I'm placing him on the same platform as Giratina, considering the fact that, again, he was able to fight against Giratina in the Pokemon movie, and fight against him, Dialga, Palkia, Groudon, Kyogre in both of their primal stages, and Kyurem, who was stronger, and pretty much the strongest and most powerful Pokemon, Outside of, um, <clears throat> sorry, outside of, uh, Groudon and, sorry, outside of Zekrom and Reshiram. So, Rayquaza is actually capable of fighting against these guys like it's nothing. Like, he actually came in, slammed, slammed Kyurem into the lake. The lake froze, right? And here's what happened. He literally busts out the lake that Kyurem had frozen and proceeds to one-shot him with a hyper beam. Huh? Like, what? How do you one-shot a Pokemon with a hype? What? You one-shot this other legendary Pokemon like it was nothing. Which, again, shows that Mega Evolution is a is a big multiplier. Now, if you want to say where that ranks him, that, again, ranks Rayquaza as a multiversal, you know, universal to multiversal threat. If I had to pick here, considering he's scaling to time, um, time, space, and... Let's see, what is Rayquaza the god of? I think reality. It was either reality or antimatter. Maybe both, because he actually does create his own multiverse, honestly. So he scales to these Pokemon very easily and is capable of battling, bodying, and overpowering them. Again, I would have to say he is possibly the second strongest Pokemon behind Arceus. If not, he's in the same platform as Giratina, fighting neck and neck for that second spot place. So honestly, uh, yeah, I, I got to say here that, um, yeah, for, for this game here, I, I definitely got to say, um, yeah, Rayquaza, um, yeah, I, I think it's very safe to say that Rayquaza is just a, a absolute monster when it comes down to it. So, um, yeah, let's get into this breakdown here. Now, easily... The physical makeup between the two is very comparable. I, I can definitely say that. Digimon, or sorry, Omegamon, or Omnimon, whichever one you guys want to call them, it, it doesn't really matter to me, uh, definitely has the universal to multiversal plus striking power, all right? Definitely in the Sky Father levels when it comes to that multiversal power, possibly beyond that. All right, if you guys want to know what Sky Father level is, you guys should, well, if you want me to explain it real quick, it's basically like Odin and Thanos levels of attack potency here. And I actually think these guys would definitely be above Thanos. It's very it's very possible, all right? They, they, they definitely be able to fight against Thanos and 
dark side in my opinion so if you yeah so take that with a grain of salt I, I don't care if dc or marvel fans get mad this is actually the truth here based on the scaling here all right so yeah um yeah i gotta say these guys are pretty equal when it comes to physical makeup um definitely strength speed durability hacks resistance if i wanted to put versus battles wiki scans on this post here i could literally list off all their abilities separately all right but again, that would take too long, and this video would be longer than it is. It probably would have been 20 minutes, but geez, I, I, I can barely tolerate that as it is. So honestly, uh, yeah, I gotta say <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. So yeah, these guys are equal in just about strength, speed, durability, all right? You could probably say one has a slight advantage over the other. Maybe Roquaza, considering he's been around a lot longer, I could have said that. But again, being around a lot longer doesn't make you, you know, the pretty much the superior one here. I mean, Superman's been around longer than Black Adam, right? Yeah, Black Adam casually toys with him. So again, it, that really doesn't matter now, does it? Yeah. So again here, um, yeah, let, let's really get into what this I'm really about to say here. Rayquaza packs more versatility. Yeah. And now you can say, oh, just use... Akumon and Greymon's, or, um, sorry, Akumon and Kom Komomon, Konomon, Konomon, shoot, I forgot the name, and, uh, Komu Komumon's, um, forms here, well, no, that's not how fusions actually work here, it's not, it's like Goku and Vegeta fusing, you don't give Goku's feats to Gogeta and Vegeta's feats to Gogeta or Vegeta. All right, it, that, that's not how this works. When you fuse, you're an entirely different character with entirely different free, feats. Otherwise, Goku and Vegeta would have done the same thing that Vegito does, which is like the spirit sword or the final Kamehameha. 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 You, you, you guys get it? It's like you just can't compare the two. Um, just because they have the same amount of feats or similar, um, you know, they're, they're, uh, you know, two characters put together. You can't compare them. Otherwise, Goku and Vegeta should have the same feats, right? Vegeta should have Ultra Instinct and Goku should have Super Saiyan Blue Evolution or Ultra Ego when they fuse, right? Yeah, it, it wouldn't, it, it doesn't work like that. And because of that, I have to give it to Rayquaza. Just because the lack of feats here, plus the versatility gap. Rayquaza has so much more versatility than um, Omnimon or Omegamon here that it actually puts it in his favor here. It's like Thor and Hulk here. Hulk doesn't have a lot of versatility, and yet Thor does. Which is why we're going to choose Thor more than the Hulk here. Alright? Martian Manhunter has a lot more versatility than Superman. And unless you're completely biased about this, Martian Manhunter would beat Superman due to the sheer amount of versatility that he has. Alright? Rayquaza just simply has more to offer than, you know, than, um, <clears throat> sorry, Rayquaza simply has more to offer than Omegamon does, or Omnimon. All right, he's got more. He's got definitely some great showings. They have great showings in their own. They have definitely decent scaling to the point where I can say they're equal. But when it comes to the versatility factor, Rayquaza is just so much. There's so much more versatility for Rayquaza here that it's absolutely ridiculous. All right. So comment down below, like, and subscribe, and share with your friends. This is Legendary Ghidorah, and please leave a request for your next versus battle down below.